Oh, hello, Darth. How very nice of you to join us. I know, I got jokes. They're dumb, but you're going to laugh. That's what you're going to do. Welcome, everyone, to our next video dealing with plants and photosynthesis. I'm Mr. Land. This is our 7th grade science flip classroom. Uh, get your Cornell notes ready. I want you to write your answers on the right-hand side, kids. Not the left column, but the right-hand side. Do your drawings and your answers, please. Be very detailed. Uh, I'll have the questions on the left. You write your answers on the right. And don't forget to write your summary at the bottom, five sentences minimum. Please do so. And I'll see you tomorrow with it in class. So let's get this presentation going here and continue our lesson. A little recap here. Photosynthesis from the first video. Plants make their food using sunlight. So they take sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. They take it into their leaves. That is radiant energy, and they transform it into glucose or sugar. That is their food, and they also make oxygen for us, which is great. We call this conversion into chemical energy. So there's really big ideas happening here. Remember that from our first video. Well, let's actually dive into the leaf and find out what's going on inside of it. Do you eat any of these? We got, what is this? What? 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 Oh, oh, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. What is that? Kids, spinach, lettuce, and some cacti. Nopales in Espanol, for those of you speaking Spanish. Um, what does this mean if you're eating these? That means you're a leaf eater. That's right. You're turning vegan. Okay, no, you're not turning vegan. You're just an omnivore. You eat many things. Oh, my God. No, that's gross. Please, I don't want that on my pizza. Get rid of it. I know. But they're kind of important and necessary for human function. Uh, we obviously need plants to plants to breathe, but they're also super important for energy. So let's dive into the actual leaves of the plants to find out what's going on in those leaves. So what do they do? Well, they catch photosynthesis, kids. That's what they're there for. They're there to catch sunlight. The bigger they are, the more light that they're going to catch, which is great for the plant, and it can continue to make photosynthesis happen. And that means that more great things can happen. So they also have many other little adaptations that we can dive into if we were studying different leaves from different biomes, like deserts have cactuses and rainforests have tons of different varieties of, of plants and leaves. Uh, Notice that leaves have little drip tips for water also. Uh, water is a big player in a leaf's life. So let's get it actually into the leaves themselves to find out what's going on inside there. I know, sir, it's a leaf. I've seen it. I've probably touched one. Heck, I ate one earlier on a salad. Ew, gross. But unimpressed Chloe agrees with you. So let's just keep going here. If you don't know who she is, look her up. She's hilarious. What do we have here? Oh, man, that's a big piece of equipment. That, kids, is a scanning electron microscope. That is called an SEM. It's really awesome. It's not a regular microscope. It uses electrons and it actually bounces them over objects in a vacuum to create these high res, a hundred million times zoomed in images. We're going to look at some today. I don't have one here in my room, but I got some images for us to look at. You ever grab the leaf and notice that one side is different than the other and it feels different? One side feels kind of smooth and the other side feels kind of scratchy. There's a big reason and a big adaptation that's happening here. So we're going to go through the layers starting from the top, the smooth side. We're going to go into the middle and then we're going to come down at the bottom, which is the rough side. That's what the order I'm going to go in. Okay, kids? What the heck is this? Is this more vegetable, sir? Are you trying to eat, get me to eat more vegetables at the dinner table? Your parents would be happy. Is this like a corn or something? Like an elote with some chili and some butter? No, 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 not at all. This is an SEM image of the first top layer of the leaf. It looks really awesome. I know it looks bumpy and rough to you. It really isn't. It's just zoomed in millions of times over. What are we looking at here? We are looking at the top layer called, what do we call this? We call it the cuticle, the cuticle. Humans have a cuticle, too. It's in our nails. We find it here at the edges where our nails grow. The top of the leaf has a cuticle. It is considered the epidermis, or top. And it feels waxy and smooth for a reason. This epidermis cuticle has this smoothness to it for its job. Everything on the plant has a job. It's an adaptation. So what could this adaptation be? Think real hard. Pause if you need to. Don't forget, kids, you can pause and rewind the videos anytime you need to get some info down. So the cuticle has this job to prevent the plant from losing water. We know that it needs water because without it, it cannot perform photosynthesis well. So the cuticle acts like a layer to seal in the water into its layers. Great. So let's actually dig inside the layers. When we look at this, oh, wow, this is cool. 
S-E-M, zoomed in. Imagine the leaf was cut like a cake, and we're looking at the inside of the cake right here. We call this a cross section. So this cross section of the leaf is showing us the top layer. So there you see the cuticle. Notice the little rough edges, right, that we saw in the first image, zoomed in. There's the top. Here's the bottom. I'm starting at the top. We're going to get into the middle. The middle is the inside or the interior. It's got such a cool shape happening here. And all of these things that you're seeing, these little structures, they have a purpose. And we're going to find this out today. Well, that is freaking awesome. Who knew that that microscope could do that? Let me get one of those at home so I can zoom in. Cool effect happening right there. Kids, if you need to pause right here, please do so. I want you to draw the anatomy or cross section of this leaf here in your Cornell notes, please. You don't have to label it, but I do need you to draw it. Use some color if you want to be a little extra, but I need you to draw it well. Please do it on the right-hand side, please. Thank you very much. Pause if you need to, and I'll keep going. So what is actually inside here? Well, we're going to start, start with the first layer. Excuse me, the second layer, but the first layer inside. So leaves have to make their food, right? Which is where they make their, their, their glucose for photosynthesis. There are two tissues inside that we're going to learn about. Notice that the arrow is pointing at the top one, and then we have an arrow pointing at the bottom one. So let's start with this top layer right under the cuticle, right under the waxy layer. This first layer is called the palisade tissue the palisade layer. Notice I typed in mesophyll, that's just another way of saying tissue. This tissue is located near the top. Do you see those little columns of green right there? It has lots of chloroplasts. Do you remember chloroplasts from the first video? They are what make the plant green. So if you look at that little column, they're very, very green. That means that, what does that mean? That means that there has to be a lot of photosynthesis happening in those little structures and they have to be capturing a lot of sunlight so they make more energy because they catch more sunlight and notice that it's near the top right so that waxy epidermis catches the light transfers it in the palisade layer starts to eat up that sunlight that radiant energy and starts to convert it into glucose so it's really green it kind of would there it is right there that's the section i'm looking at right there the palisade layer they're always lined up like really nice and neat like little columns and they're just eating up that sunlight they're like mine 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 right like the seagulls right um the seagulls in that movie which one am i talking about oh yeah finding nemo so they are always competing for that sunlight they're perfect for this because they're lined up perfectly. This is the palisade layer. Now, as we go down into the middle of it, well, now we're going to get into the really, really heavy stuff here. Now, we have this layer called the spongy layer or the spongy tissue. Why spongy? Because it actually is slightly spongy. It has this sponginess because once that photosynthesis happens in the palisade layer, it transfers the gases of photosynthesis down. And the gases of photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and oxygen so those gases tend to get trapped in this layer waiting to get expelled or taken out of the leaf or used up so the palisade followed by the spongy and now we are going to come to the bottom of the leaf which remember feels how how does it feel feels a little rough so underneath we have the roughest layer we call this the the we don't we actually don't call it a layer but we we have little structures there they're little pores they open up and why do they open up is so that they could release the oxygen that we're going to get from the plants at night when there's no sunlight those little pores those little openings they actually close themselves what do we call these we call them stomata what tomato no not tomato stomata i know it sounds crazy it sounds like an italian pasta dish right well these little pores open up what do they look like? They look like this. They look like small little openings. And there are the pores where the gas of oxygen is released to the, um, to the environment, to the atmosphere. So let's take a close up here. Here is a stomata, stoma for single, and it's very small. And they open up and they close at night. They open up during the day and they close at night. Now, that's the opening. Now, if you'll notice, there's some little bean shapes around the opening there. Those little structures actually protect the opening or the stomata. Those little structures that protect the opening, that control the opening, are called guard cells. Kind of like, I'm on guard, open, close, open, night, close. They're called guard cells because what do they do? They guard. So I want for you in your coral notes to please draw the stoma 
stoma, please, in your in your nose, please. All right, here is an SEM of stoma. They look like freaky little eyes, right? They're just like blinking at you. Look right around the edges and you'll see the guard cells and that opening is where the stomata are opening and releasing their gas. So these are the vocabulary that you should have down in your notes as answers. Um, our chloroplast, we kind of did in our last lesson. We have our waxy cuticle, our palisade, our spongy, our stomata, and our guard cell. Thank you kids for participating. If you want to go back and rewind, please do so. Get your answers in that right hand section, please. Do your summary at the bottom and I will see you in class and we'll talk some more. We're definitely going to learn some more about plants. And like the wisest Jedi Master says, <laughs> much to learn you still have. We'll see you later kids. Bye.